It's the Locked On Flyers podcast for Thursday, April 11th, your daily dose of Flyers news, analysis, and high quality content. That's a lot of questions about this losing streak and what it means for the Flyers. There's more questions than answers for sure. Your Locked On Flyers, your daily podcast on the Philadelphia Flyers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Hey there, and thanks for making Locked On Flyers your first listen every day. I am Rachel Donner. You can find me on Twitter at our Miriam. I'm here as always with Russ Cohen, who's on all your favorite social media apps at Sportsology. We are at Locked On Flyers on Twitter, Instagram, Threads, and Blue Sky as well. Today's episode is brought to you by Indeed. Indeed knows when you're growing your own business, you have to make every dollar count. That's why with Indeed, you only pay for quality applications that match your must-have job requirements. Visit Indeed.com slash Locked On to get started hiring now. Terms and conditions apply. You can find us over on YouTube or on the SiriusXM app or anywhere you listen to podcasts. Subscribe to get our latest episode as soon as it's available here on the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Uh, We are going to dig into this Flyers collapse. I want to call out one of our listeners, Eric. Um, We just did not have time to mention this yesterday in our uh, mailbag segment, but He sent us a note over on Blue Sky saying that he is a fan of where Oscar Eklund uh, has been playing in Luea. I believe that's how it's pronounced. Uh, Apologies for for butchering that. Um, uh, But that, you know, he's he had a successful season over there. and, And Eric, success this season was a huge surprise to all. Uh, But sadly, his performance dropped the longer the season went and said he was a no-show during the playoffs, but that Eric is also glad he's getting this chance um, and he'll do well in the AHL next season. Yeah, I mean, I think he's got a little bit of a chance to be a fourth liner at some point in his career. I think if he has a willingness to go to the net, that would uh, help his his chances because the Flyers are desperately looking for someone to do that. Yep. Yep. So thanks again, Eric, for some of that intel uh, Mm, direct from watching him play. Uh, Moving over to the Flyers and this eight game losing streak we have just experienced. And, you know, we've been sort of talking around it related to some of the specific games we've covered recently. But just looking at the bigger context of the rebuild, do you think this collapse affects any moves they make this summer i mean it should uh i don't know if it will like i just i don't know but i think it should i think it should um tell them that do far less pickups on the blue line like you want to pick up one veteran defenseman fine like a depth person who doesn't have to play every day perfect do that they don't need more than that but again last year they loaded up if you want to pick up one more, you know, middle six forward for one year, fine, do it. But other than that, it really shouldn't, they shouldn't be picking up guys that are going to take instant spots away from players. Uh, they may try Cam Atkinson again at the beginning of next year. And then again, he might fail out of the gate. And if he does, then bring up somebody like that's, they need to do more of that. And I do think that's should be the focus. I don't know if it will be. Yeah, I think that aspect of it is interesting because I feel like we will need a little bit of time postseason for like a medical evaluation on Cam Atkinson and see if it was really just him coming back from injury and there's hope for him getting better next season or this is it, right? And and that that will affect what decision they make uh, on him for sure. Uh, but I, I also think that yeah you're right that they should do very little pickups over the off season and that it really should be a prospect growth from within oriented season next year and everything they do should be around that theme i worry that because this team got 
close and just didn't quite get there that they're going to think the other way uh, because they have in the past. Now, it is a different management than we've had, you know, in terms of this sort of trend. I just wonder which voices are going to win out in the room. On right. That front. Right. That's going to be the key. Uh, who's going to speak up with the best plan and say, not really even with the best plan, just saying we've got to move forward with the plan that we started because yep. we're in the mushy middle and the only way out of the mushy middle, and this part's proven. The only way out is to do some sort of rebuild retool for real and keep doing it. That's the only way out right. of the middle. Exactly. Now, you, you know, looking at the remaining games this season, uh, do you think they can win any more games or are they just completely done? They might win one, but otherwise I think no. they're done. But I, I, you know, I don't think they're going to beat the Rangers. I don't think they're going to, well, the Capitals, they might beat because the Capitals may not need the game at that point. Right. So, you know, and then who's, who am I leaving out? New Jersey. The Devils. That's the one I think yeah. they could win. Yeah, same. I think so. Uh, now, looking at this streak, however it turns out, whether it's 11 losses, whether it's one or two wins and, you know, eight or nine losses in this end of the season, what does the experience of being in this kind of collapse do to or for guys like Ali Lixel, Ronnie Adderd, Adam Jinning, and the goalies, like the younger, newer guys? to this team like does it give them more resilience and something to work toward or is this like demoralizing and and gives them a little bit of negativity going into the, the off season now young guys are always pretty positive i don't think it's going to affect them i think it's fine that they experience everything they experienced highs and lows there's nothing wrong with that i think it's the uh the veterans that it's going to bug more because like you have Konechny going into his last year. Like, there's a very good question now whether you should move forward with him or or trade him at the draft, or at least try and trade him at the draft. And so I think there's some of that. I think you have to look at Delorier and say, is there really an end point for him now with the Flyers? Because he's sort of not fitting in anymore. Uh, even the coach is not playing him. So as a GM, you got to look at that and say, what are we going to do with him? You know, we, we talked about other contracts that are buyouts and all that. So all those things have to be taken into consideration because even those players, you got to find out with Risto what the offseason plan is going to be for him. Uh, Drysdale, certainly not the same player. You got to try and get him back to speed. Right. So there's a, there's a lot of these challenges, really almost as many as last year. And so, and, and you don't have Carter Hart. And now that you don't have Carter Hart, uh, to start the year and bank some wins, that's going to affect next year too. Because if nothing else, we've learned Urson is not Carter Hart. Maybe he could be, but right now he's definitely not. And so that's these are things now that I think veterans are going to look at and and know. So like even like someone like Scott Lawton's probably going to figure, eh, I'm getting traded. If it's not over the summer, I'm, I'm going to get traded. Like so th that those guys are the ones that you know will be interesting to see. Yeah, I think there's so many layers to this in terms of, you know, contract status, in terms of what should the makeup of this team be next year, you know, regardless of the cap. But the cap is going to have a huge effect because there is a lot of dead cap space um, or dead cap usage, I should say, yes. by the Flyers here. And so that's going to affect some buyout possibilities and um, I think that that's going to be something huge for this team and, and for Danny Breer and his math people to figure out because um, there's only so much of this that they can withstand and still ice a quality enough team to get where they need to go this next season. And, you know, you don't want guys that shouldn't be there hanging around simply because you can't afford to buy them out. Right, right. Um yeah, it's going to be a tough one. That's that's where, you know, you could hold on to like Risto if he comes back, fine. I mean, that's not going to kill him. Couturier is coming back for people that think they're going to be able to trade him or whatever. No, he's coming back, so you have to find a role for him. Uh, but there's a lot of a lot of other things, a lot of other maneuverability there. Um, I just, yeah, I think I think unfortunately the cap is going to dictate a lot of what the Flyers can do. Yep, 
Absolutely. Absolutely. We'll be doing a lot of cat math uh, over right. the next little bit. Uh, yeah, that's why I have my spreadsheets. Russ, and yeah, luckily one of us is more excited about it. Than the other. <laughs> I mean, I'm not excited about having to do the crunching. I'm just excited about having a, a methodology to to use to do it with. <laughs> yeah, okay. But that being said, you know, there's been sort of this question circling around John Tortorella, right? Because of how he's been perceived over the course of this losing streak and, you know, the things he said and, and whatnot. And people are questioning whether he should or will return next season. Yeah. I mean, Darren Dreger posted that the Flyers said he'll be behind the bench next year. It's not like coming through official channels. I guess John will say when he feels like it. So it seems like they've decided on that. So on this show, we're not going to speculate any further. We're going to say, okay, he's back, and then we'll work it from there. Yeah, absolutely. Well, we will continue to be talking about all of this and all the little minutia over the next several weeks, I am sure, uh, leading up to the draft and what the team should do there. We're going to talk about a draft-eligible prospect Berkeley Catton later in the show but we do have those three games left the first of which is against the New York Rangers we're going to talk about that one coming up next eat stress-free this spring with factors delicious ready-to-eat meals every fresh never frozen meal is chef crafted dietitian approved and ready to eat in just two minutes you can choose from a weekly menu of 35 options including Popular options like Calorie Smart, Keto, Protein Plus, Vegan, and Veggie. You can discover 60 or more add ons each week, like breakfast, on the go, lunches, snacks, and drinks to help you stay fueled and feel good all day long. Get started today and fuel up for those springtime goals. Get chef prepared meals in two minutes. It eliminates the hassle of prepping, cooking, or cleaning up. Simply heat up and savor the good stuff. Plus, you can customize your weekly meals with the flexibility to get as much or as little as you need. You can pause or reschedule deliveries to suit your lifestyle. And we're celebrating Earth Day all month long. Look out for the Earth Month Eats badge on the menu for the lowest carbon footprint meals. Head to factormeals.com slash locked on NHL 50. Use the code locked on NHL 50 to get 50% off your first box plus 20% off your next box. That's code locked on NHL 50 at factormeals.com slash locked on NHL 50. Are you watching sports on cable TV all day? Have to turn down the volume with all the shouting? Make the switch to locked on sports today. It's your free 24 7 sports streaming channel program for you every day to bring you the biggest stories without all the screaming. Today brings you can't miss analysis, opinions, and news streaming 24 7 on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app, part of the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day. So, Russ, the New York Rangers. Um, Rangers have kind of had the Flyers number this season. Um, We last saw them not that long ago, March 26th, where the Rangers won in OT to clinch their playoff spot. That was not enjoyable. Um, prior to that, the Rangers won on February 24th and then the Rangers won again on the Black Friday game. So sensing a trend here, right? Yeah. I mean, look, this is what I keep telling people, uh, with the injury development with Savannah Jetta, he's not going to play. And, and that's, you know, that's one less guy they have to worry about. But, uh, even if the Rangers aren't fully motivated to be in this game, you're going to face your Sturkin or, or quick. So both good. Yeah. So it's like you're not going to really save out there. And there's going to be guys like Lafreniere who maybe wants to reach 30 goals. There's guys that are going to want to, you know, get career milestones. Uh, Panarin's piling on points. So there's, there's still enough there that, you know, if you don't play the right game, it's going to be just like Montreal. I mean, that's, that's really the way you have to look at it. And honestly, if you don't think Peter Laviolette is going to enjoy, um, you know, crushing the life out of the Flyers after the way he left and everything was, you know that he has still a little angst too. So that's the other factor. Yeah, I think so. Uh, I think that, you know, you look at the Rangers' um, most recent games, they had that line brawl versus the Devils. um, And then they just lost to the New York Islanders, who are playing great, by the way. Yeah, the Islanders really took it to them. I watched that game. 
yeah, uh, just a real good game for the Isles, except for the fact that there was a couple controversial hits in the game. The aforementioned one on Zibanejad that will likely take him out of this game against the Flyers. Um, you know, there was another one in the game as well. Laviolette was just absolutely incensed. I think that was games. Everything. I, 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 yeah, I don't think it was a dirty hit. And I do think he's, it's, he's building it up for next game because he knows that there's a very good chance they're going to have to play them in the playoffs. So I think exactly. Yeah. I think that's why. Exactly. However, I do think that it creates extra motivation for the Rangers going into the game against the Flyers. Um, I think that they're already in playoff mode and there's still a, you know, small but significant enough possibility that the Canes can catch the Rangers for yeah. the division title and they're going to want to you know, like hold them off. Right. Right. I, I think they do. So I do think there's that, too. So that's that's a good point as well. It, yeah, it, they're motivated enough that you're going to face a team that's going to be better than what you just faced. Yeah, I think so. Um, you know, they did just announce that Blake Wheeler, who was already on IR, is not likely to return for the playoffs either. Right. Um, we'll see Ryan Lindgren though this time around that we did not. Yeah, he, he was returned. in there yes, last yesterday and he looked pretty good. Yeah. So yeah, he'll be there. Yeah. So uh, that'll be a difference from the last time we saw them. But yeah, the Rangers are eight and two in their last ten, even with that loss to the Islanders. So they've been playing. Pretty well overall. You talked about the goaltending. That's a huge factor here, right? It is. Now it's a huge factor. Uh, their defense is doing well. Uh, I would think for this one, unless they get a feeling that Delorier is going to come in, they're not going to play Rempe. They're going to play Rempe against the Islanders for sure. But I don't know if they're going to play Rempe against the Flyers. I think if they think that Delorier is out, you're not going to see him. So I don't think that part of the game will really be there. Uh, you know. Now, who's to say, you know, somebody else could get annoyed and start a fight. I mean, that's obvious that could happen. Right. And uh, they had been playing Will Cooley it, yeah. when Rempe's out, who is a much better player. Oh, much better and, offensively, for sure. Yeah. So I think that's the right move for them, regardless of any mm -hmm. opponent situation. Like, yeah. if I were them, I would play Cooley instead. But, you know, um, sometimes. Uh, it does Sometimes it gets the end of Dallas with these two teams. Yeah. You know that. Yeah. Uh, but along those lines, Truba has been back as well. And so I think he takes care of some of that element. He does. Uh, yeah. He, Rangers, right? he does. Like he's, he's a, an, an, an intimidator out there. So uh, I, as you might be aware, I like to pull recent stats in order to, you know, look at these matchups. So since uh, March 1st, um, the Rangers shooting percentage is 11.43, which is like not the best, but pretty good, it's, right? It's respectable. It's good. Yeah. The Flyers is 7.37, which is the worst in the NHL. It's awesome. and we, you know, it, like the eye test would have told you that, right? Yes. Yeah. And, and the chance sheet that they like to quote yes. while well, we're getting chances, but okay. Got it. Right. So you can get all the scoring chances in the world. They got to go in. Yep. So interestingly though, uh, I thought this was absolutely stunning. The Rangers power play in that time period, just since March 1st, first in the NHL at 34%. That is spectacular. Yeah. That's as high as, probably ever they've had in the franchise, maybe going back to 94 when they had Leach and Zubov. Uh, Zubanejad's been a big part of that. Kreider in front of the net. Like, that's a nightmare mm -hmm. for the Flyers. Kreider in the in the crease. Like, they were just letting, you know, Montreal guys hang in the crease. Are you going to really let Chris Kreider hang in the crease? Like, I mean, <laughs> history says yes. However, yeah, right, they really right. should not. They shouldn't. Uh, right. be be doing that yeah i think that's going to be the biggest challenge for the flyers defensively is to fix those problems with the right. defensive covering coverage problems that we saw were a huge failure in the game against montreal and columbus specifically i mean that was the most obvious you know deficiency from the flyers blue line yeah and you can't play for dodov in this game it's not a good game to put him in not at madison square garden no like 
in that atmosphere. Madison Square Garden, you have Panarin on the other side. Like, it's just not a good idea. No, no. Uh, you, you talked about Panarin a little a bit, and I think he was hovering around 100 points when we saw them last. He's got 116 now, so that's yeah. great. Um, <laughs> I think that... I think he has 46 goals, season? right? Oh, something like that. I didn't like pull People out. People were the... complaining he didn't score enough last year, and now with Laviolette, he's scoring. But he's not a, a goal scorer. That's the funny thing. Like he is a better playmaker, but no. he could do, do both, though. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, the only kind of bright light is that the Flyers are still somehow better than the Rangers at faceoffs. Uh, the Flyers are above fifty percent, and the Rangers are at. Uh, 49.5. So there's that, maybe some opportunities for set plays. And that's, yeah, that's I think there's a possibility for that. And I think, um, you know, Trocek is going to take a hundred faceoffs in that game, but they'll let yeah. some of the other guys partake. Missing Zabanajeb will, will hurt them in that regard. So yeah, yeah. That, that's an opportunity. Yeah, for sure. But uh, I'm just honestly hoping they don't embarrass themselves because. Uh, it would be nice to get some decent looking wins to close out the season. Yeah, you know, the Hopefully. Rangers offensively are going to push it. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, we'll see how this plays out. We'll talk about it on the show tomorrow for sure. Uh, it is time for our weekly NHL draft eligible prospect profile. We're going to talk about Berkeley Catton coming up next. When you're drafting your fantasy team, do you ever wish you could handpick the best stars for your business team? If you're building your talent roster, you need Indeed. Indeed is the hiring platform where you could attract, interview, and hire all in one place. Don't spend hours on multiple job sites looking for candidates with the right skills when you can do it all with Indeed. Find top talent fast with Indeed's suite of powerful hiring tools like matching assessments and virtual interviews. And hate waiting? Indeed's U.S. data shows over 80% of Indeed employers find quality candidates whose resume on Indeed matches their job description the moment they they sponsor a job. With Indeed matching as soon as you sponsor a post, you get a short list of quality candidates whose resumes on Indeed match your job description. Boom. It's hiring at warp speed. And now with Indeed, you only pay for quality applications that meet your hiring criteria. Visit Indeed.com slash LockedOn to start hiring now. That's Indeed.com slash LockedOn. Terms and conditions apply. Cost per application Pricing not available for everyone. Need to hire? You need Indeed. So, Russ, Berkeley Catton, a uh, real fun kid to take a look at. He is an 18-year-old center, uh, although he's kind of a smaller guy for center uh, at 5'11 and only mm -hmm. 163. Uh, plays for the Spokane Chiefs in the WHL. Is there one C? Uh, he has played for Team Canada in several circumstances, but uh, for Spokane, they were swept in the first round of the WHL playoffs. So his season is done there. Um, I, I think that he's somebody that might be a little bit out of reach for the Flyers, but why do you want to talk about him? Well, I wanted to talk about him because of that exact thing that you said. He might He's a little bit of a smaller guy at center. But remember, Braden Point is 5'10", 183. And he kind of has that same sort of body as him. So I go back to when I was at the rookie photo shoot and I barely knew Braden Point. And I could tell just by seeing him there that I was watching somebody that I, I needed to watch more of. Uh, before he came up to Tampa, and then we knew what happened. And I think Catton is kind of cut from a similar cloth. And so he's surprised that he, you know, I spoke to him recently. He is surprised that he got as many points as he did. He was looking to dominate, but he didn't think he'd dominate like that. Uh, looking at instead, yeah, 116 yeah. points this season in 68 games, 54 goals, yeah. 62 assists. That is nothing to tease at. It is not chop liver. Um, his faceoffs. 56%, 48% puck battles won, uh, lots of power play, shorthanded time, 23 minutes average a game. It's a lot. So, you know, he he's a player that could really handle it. Uh, what's interesting is I could let you know that 
when you look at his D zone starts, he was getting more of them late in the season. Coaching staff got more comfortable with them. And so he was warranting that. So that's, that's a big deal too. So speeds there, scoring's there. Uh, you know, I'm not saying he's a Braden point projection. What I'm saying is for the naysayers that say, ah, you know, he'll play wing and just take some faceoffs. It's an easy, lazy narrative. I don't think that's the case for this guy. Uh, so I think if you're drafting him, you're drafting him as a center. And then the question will be with the Flyers bringing in all these six foot, six foot two, six foot four guys, would they draft a five foot 11 center? To me, they're crazy if they don't. But, right. you know, because you can point out point Jack Hughes, Kaprizov's only 5'10. Nobody seems to talk about that. Yeah, I think that's what's interesting to me about him as an option for the Flyers is he doesn't fit the Flyers mold per se. However, he fits the mold of some very successful NHL players. He does. And you have to think like, Danny Breer is a smaller guy who found great success in the NHL. You have to think his brain is going to be on guys like this a little more than maybe previous uh, GMs would just because, you know, a different position, obviously, but similar build. And I think that they would be crazy not to, to keep an eye on him and see if he potentially drops. Now, Right now, he's ranked kind of in the six to ten ish range. In yeah, I have most at people, at 11. but I think he'll he can move back up into the top ten. The top ten is tough in this draft, so having him at eleven means he's right there. You make one mistake, there's one difference on the board, you know, and right it changes everything. And and that's what I wonder because the depth and quality of defensemen in this draft are so big. Are people gonna? be looking more at the defenseman and let a guy like this go a little bit further just because they want to get one of those top blue line guys. Yeah. That possibility exists right now. Let's see how many, I think I have five defensemen in the top 10. You can make an argument that there's six. No, I have, I have four now because I moved Dickinson out, but I think by the end there might be five uh, and some have, even have six. So there is that argument. The The problem is, is someone really going to let this guy drop? I mean, we've seen, you know, Zach Benson drop a little bit. So I can't say it's not impossible. Shane Wright obviously dropped. The Flyers, if they're at 11, I think have a shot at them. If they're not 11, they don't have a shot at them. That's just the way I look at it. Right. But that's why, you know, there is a chance there. And that's why we want to yes. talk about a guy yeah. like him. Um, he was recently nominated for WHL Player of the Year, yeah, uh, which is good. And um, he wore the C for Canada in the Holinka Cup last year. And I, I just think that there is a lot of potential here. And um, I, I know you don't do NHL comparisons very much. So the fact that you brought up Braden Point even at all, I think is a big deal because that is not typical for your analysis. No, no, it's not. But I feel like with a player like this, um, it was going to have to be said. Now, he's going to have to change jerseys because Noah Cates wears 27, he wears 27. But maybe Cates won't be a player <laughs> at, at that point. Uh, that's possible. But That so, is a small problem to have. It's a small problem down the road. But I do think he could do great for them. and And I do think... If you're looking for someone who could be a compliment to Mitchkoff down the road, then you're looking at a guy like this. Yeah, that's one of the things that's most interesting to me about him is that all the scouting reports say he's got a really good two way game. Yep. And, you know, he covers everything that a good center needs to do, both yep. ends of the ice. And um, I think somebody with that kind of skill, you need somebody like that with Mitch Cobb. Yeah. And, and, and you I can think put that somebody really big with them on, you know, on the wing. But if you have those two on a line, that's, that's a line, you know, that's a real skill line with speed and everything. So that's yeah. a, you know, that's something like, you know, they don't have currently. No, that is absolutely true. So uh, we'll see if he, you know, trends up, trends down, what happens yep. with the other guys in. And he's out of the playoffs. Right? So chances are um, the U18s, if he's playing in that, which he probably will, is his last chance to trend up or down. 
Right. So that is a good tournament to watch yeah. uh, for sure coming up later this month. So uh, we will be watching Catton as he plays in that tournament. We'll add him to our spreadsheet, uh, as I always do each and every growing. week, uh, of draft eligible prospects. We've taken a look at the link to that is in the show notes. Uh, on tomorrow's show, we're going to recap the Rangers game we talked about. We're going to talk about Flyers Devils and a lot about Wayne Simmons as well. Uh, excited for that tribute. As a reminder, we always want to hear from you. If you've got mailbag questions or prospects you want us to take a look at, you can let us know via Twitter at Lockdown Flyers. You can email us at Lockdown Flyers at Gmail or comment on our YouTube channel. I'm Rachel. I'm on Twitter at R Miriam. That's R M I R I A M. I'm Russ. I'm at Sportsology, S P O R T S O L O G Y. Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24 7 streaming channel on YouTube. It's now also available on Amazon Fire TV in the free Fire TV channels app. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24 7, covering top sports stories of the day with local experts of Locked On, plus national shows covering every league like Locked On NHL. Find Locked On Sports Today, now available in the free Fire TV channels app. Have a great day, everyone.